Hello there. Hi. I'm Bev, senior pastor, and I look after this wonderful group of worship leaders and video editors and sound editors. And this is our life since March. So I thought uh, you guys out there might want to know what's going on behind the screens, screens, up uh, screens and scenes, uh, as how we uh, got worship up and going and what's been happening for them personally, uh, basically how we've been doing worship for three months. So I've got a few questions I'm going to ask these guys. We have, in my left-hand corner, we've got Dave who does the editing and bottom right, we've got Josh who does editing. And then we've Anthony, Paul and Matt, who you would have seen on your screens leading worship. We thought I'd introduce them all. So my first question to you is, <laughs> what were your, th your first thoughts when we went into lockdown and you thought about worship? Shall I, shall I start with, so I think initially, the first couple of services, we didn't have any worship. And so right. I remember, Bev, you sang uh, a, a sort of spontaneous song in the oh, first did, one yeah. that we did. Yeah, which feels like yeah. forever ago, because it was. And then the following week, I don't think we had anything. And throughout that, I was chatting with some of the guys and I said to Paul, Paul, could you just record me in your sort of living room or wherever, just a proof of concept to see if we could do it. So I think the first thing we did was Paul just recording uh, himself with guitar, just guitar and, you know, vocals. Yeah. And it sort of stemmed from there, really. And, and then we sort of built, built up on it as, as we went along. So I think in, in tandem with that, Paul and I were talking um, and between us thought we have to do something here and, and looking up to what other people were doing. Um, and uh, yeah, it started small in that way, didn't it, Paul? Yeah, definitely. I think we the, the first thought was, how, how are we going to do this? Um, and it was literally just a mobile phone in my, uh, in my extension. And, and when you listen to it back, you kind of go, well, it's, it's authentic, which is what we wanted. Absolutely authentic. We didn't want a performance or a, a show or anything. But um, I think it's always been the sort of DNA of Sutton Vineyard Church to, to, to try and do things well. Um, and I just, I looked at that first video and thought, this is, this is great. Um, but we could do this so much better. So I think my, my first thoughts were always, how can we improve? Um, but how do we remain authentic in what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and greatest challenges for any of you? Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was probably yeah. just figuring out the best way to do it, wasn't it? Because at, at, at first we were like, right, well, we've, say we want to... So we started with Paul, so one person. And then it was like, okay, how do we introduce more people in? Or do we even need to? And I think we all agreed with you. Boys, didn't we? Sonia was singing, yeah. yeah. And then it was like, right, how do we get the likes of Anthony, Matt, Anna to all sort of get involved as well? So then it was sort of sharing the knowledge, wasn't it, really? And then getting Josh on board to do the, the sound mix as well. Yeah. Um, Matt, do you want to talk about, or Anthony, how, how you came on board? And So um, obviously, at the early days, it was Paul, Paul and I. Um, so Paul, I think, did the first, then I did a week, and then Paul did a week, and then I did a week. And the, I think each time we looked at that and thought, we've got to um do better with the next one wasn't it and um mm. so yeah both of us the first one was camera audio um paul with his guitar me with my piano um and that was the easiest um, time piano. of all because we didn't have to worry about recording anything into anything in any other way apart from the phone doing it all but you know it was authentic and uh, basic um, but we wanted to do more and we wanted because we wanted the church to have um, a really great experience of worship outside of being able to be together in the church. So that was that was the um, the driver for this was like, how can we make this something that people can really engage with and have a, a decent worship time at home? And, you know, those early days were really stressful and yeah. we wanted worship not to be a stressful part of that. So. We almost, I think we almost burdened, took, that, took the burden of that stress on ourselves to try and make this work. And, and it was hard, you know, you know, Paul's got um, a lot more experience on um, sort of recording. Um, I don't, I'd never, I'd never done it before. Um, so I had this software that I had never used um, because I thought maybe I one day would, but um, you know, it was a good thing I did. 
Um, Deep learning uh, curve, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it was a massive learning curve. And, you know, that first time, the, the amount of post work that I had to put into um, chopping up this thing because I'd recorded the video at a different frame rate than the audio, <laughs> um, it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the following, you know, then and then um, and then, we, you know, when it was Paul's turn. So when it was Paul's week, I was then recording mine. And I thought in my head, I thought maybe I need to make a better background experience so I moved my piano and everything into my uh, family room um, and I took over the family room for two days because the first day was such a nightmare and I swore so much at this computer and, and equipment and everything else that I couldn't worship because it would be fake <laughs> so then I had to do it on the Sunday and uh, it caused trauma in, a, in my house Yes. Um, doing that's that. the so, lens we go to people that's the lens we go to <laughs> <laughs> so we moved back to my study <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I built a whole studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, Matt, when you came on? Well, I think for me it was, um, so I was kind of late to the party because all that was happening at uh, the hospital and stuff. But um, I think leading up to when I knew that I was in the first one, it was trying to think what is it that I almost deconstructed a bit of what is it uh, what what am I or who am I as a worship leader, and therefore how do I recreate that on on cam you know on camera, um, and so um, actually it was just it seems like a, a simple answer, but it took a while to get there, which was it's just me just me being me, and so so I actually spent quite a number of hours just leading worship in front of a camera to get used to leading worship in front of a camera so that actually when I came to press record for the 78th time or, or whichever take I was on, that, um, so that actually it could, it could just hopefully feel like me leading worship, um, even though you had to kind of go through all that stuff of, or for me it was imagining the congregation and, you know, seeing Chris Nalini sat on the front row or, Neil sat in the middle of the middle section or Sonia sat off in the dance studio of actually what kind of what's God doing with them now and and therefore where does this song need to go now and those kind of things which I do on a Sunday because I'm in that setting but having to yeah. kind of you know, get myself into that thought of spiritually if you like getting myself into that setting to try and tap into the what makes the way that I worship on a Sunday and therefore try and recreate it in my studies. You even did that with the type of camera you used, didn't you? You were like, I want it, I want it to feel more like a Sunday. Yes. Um, I mean, it turned out the camera was a complete heap of junk and I was just trying to bit. But yeah. other, than, other than that. Unfortunately, that was your problem and that wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was, it was like I, um, as actually me and Paul have talked about before, I'm deliberately mobile when I, when I lead worship for various different ways of how um, of how it sort of instructs the congregation about where I think we are with the song or something like that, as well as what it does with the band. And I wanted that to be part of it as well. So yeah, trying to first of all think about using a camera with a fisheye lens, which may kind of gave the scope for me to move a bit more and not feel like I was just rooted to having yeah. to stay within the, stay in front of the camera and have the thirds and all the rest of that stuff that you're yeah. interested in. It, so it, it, folks, it, all the things we do behind the scenes. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What about Josh? What about challenges for you? I think it's been a it's been a real balance between this drive for excellence and the heart of worship because it's easy to have a heart of worship to, a heart of worship in something, but for it to be technically and visually awful. Like, yeah. You know, it's all very well, you know, Paul could do the best heart of worship and the most amazing worship set but you know if the video is rubbish or if you can't hear him or whatever then there's kind of a balance there of going actually at what point do you retake something you know if you fluff a note do you do you redo it or do you keep it in and there's been a real balance there obviously because it's not a recording in a studio situation it's not a contemporary album it's a it's a situation of worship so it's finding that balance there between what's what's kind of giving it that live feel for everybody as well. And we want it to feel like everyone's in the room and there. You don't want it to feel like you're just watching something on the telly as well. So it's been a, it's been a learning curve for all of us, I think. And what about your greatest joy or blessing that's come out of doing 
worship online. Anything surprised you or? I think surprised. Me, Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Well, for me, the, the, there are two. That One of them is, is worshiping yeah. with, with Sonia, um, which we don't ordinarily do on a Sunday um, serving team. Um, uh, and then I think the first week that we did, uh, that we kind of trialed out having all the band play together, mm. um, obviously recorded separately. So that's a bit of a weird thing as well. But um, that first moment on screen of seeing it all together, um, yeah. it just, for me, brought back to, to life that we are doing this together, even though we are separate at the moment. Um, so that was a real... A real blessing and 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 i'm going to say it here that dave and josh have been absolutely phenomenal yes. in what they do yeah. and, and yeah, becky yeah. as well who's not on the on the chat today but um yeah. yeah it's just been a real blessing just to bring it all together and, and to achieve what we have done in what um 13 14 weeks it's it's been amazing yeah really has yeah, I was just going to say, I, I love, so I have the privilege of getting all the files in. So I I see and hear everybody on their own and I love bringing it all together. And then Josh sends me a, a temp mix usually on a Sunday night or a Monday morning and I put it on. And honestly, I just listen to it over and over and over again because it's just so wonderful just to hear all you all singing together. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just nice to be together, like Paul said, even though we're not necessarily all together. Yeah, sure. I think I, I also... Um... Because it's such an abstract experience, like leading worship in your your study, and then trying to think, well, how does this actually work in practice? To then see the either get messages or see the messages from people who have been blessed by it. I think it's that's been am yeah. like amazing. Um, yeah, just that. I so say it just feels so abstract. So actually, the fact that it it, it is blessing people and. Um, in in the church and hopefully giving them a feel of you know a, a, a kind of a reminder a bit of of what Sundays are like or were like and I think that comes back to what you were saying Josh about finding that you know the balance between and um, between worshiping and it being something that's really professional and all the rest of it and yeah. um that actually I just you know that the fact that I th I think that people I think you said as well actually Anthony but the people want that feeling of of their church of being with their you know with with their worship leaders if you like and, and their worship band and singing the songs they used to and all that kind of stuff and so um but being able to do that and hopefully bring something of svc to youtube on a on a sunday morning but actually the fact that that's then then gone on to bless people has been it's been really great it's been nice that we can take all of these uh worship songs and put them up so they're all on youtube now check it out i can subscribe and um but you can watch shameless them plug there Dave. yeah yeah That's i brilliant. don't I'm sorry it's just innate in me uh but it's just nice people can go back and listen and watch these again and they're there you know to be looked at what you know and you can worship whenever you want to which is nice i, think I was going to say that's probably um I'm going to go back a bit now to greatest challenge, I think, is being watched on a screen by so many people and you're scrutinised. Um, I think that has been a challenge for a lot of us because you, you can't be covered up by your band in some way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's going, oh, look what they're wearing. Oh, does he have a bullet hole above his head? This is you yesterday, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> in the wall. He had a big picture up. Big picture. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> And, and yet the joyous thing, I think, for me, Sue, has been just the creativity that's come out, that all of us, and knowing that we can do stuff that didn't, we didn't think we could do. Yeah. yeah. Talk, actually, talking about things that you can get away with, I, um, uh, I've got a bit of a habit from time to time on a Sunday morning of accidentally changing theology, but um, people don't realise it just because <laughs> yeah. it gets lost in the, you know, it gets lost in the noise of everything. And um, I was doing some recording for a song, which actually... Um, didn't make it into one of the sets. I'm uh, but I, I was happy with the. I thought, oh, this is you know, this has kind of gone right. And then Kelly gave it a listen to see, and it was um, uh, no heart can fathom the boundless grace is the is the words. But actually, I said in the time that I sang it and recorded it, groundless grace, which obviously is a slight. Just a slight change in the uh, in the theology. Um, I thought I may have got away with it, but she was like, "I'm not sure you have." And then when I listened to it again, 
I had enunciated groundless, just perfectly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's got to go. There's no going back from that one. <laughs> if it helps, me and Josh had a discussion about whether or not we could change where you said lyrics that weren't necessarily exactly right on the on the official lyrics. We were trying to work out if we could add like S to the end of your sentences, but we <laughs> said that it was probably well, too much work. <laughs> well, one of them actually, you would need to remove the S as well, wouldn't you, on the last one? Oh, probably. that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think also, though, going back to your your point about being on screen, it's uh, Matt and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. That when you lead worship, it's a point in time, and it's it's done, and it's then you move on. I think what's been really useful in developing what we're, we're doing is actually going back to those earlier videos and going, what what could we do better? What what's what's already good? What could we do better? What should we not do? Um, and I think my first video was in front of, filmed in front of the uh, patio doors. So, so actually you got a very dark kind of face, if you like, and um, this, you know, big shiny background. So things like that. Um, and again, with going back to principles and values that we just want to make this accessible as, as much as possible. Um, and, and so if you've got this really busy background going on or, or there's just, you know, distracting things, um, we want to, um, and I think we're learning from that, that we just cut out the stuff that distracts um, because ultimately all we want people to, be able to do is in, in whatever way possible is, is to, to um, enter into worship. And I think that was one of the things that came, um, that's come through with this is actually, you know, there's no room for vanity in this because um, I don't think I could ever put out a video where I'll be happy with um, how I look when I'm singing. Um, and it's best never to watch it back. Um, but also, it's it's, it, <laughs> right. Um, but also with, you know, the performance, this, this, it's just that constant reminder. This is not a performance. We are not trying to make a good show for people to enjoy some worship songs. We're trying to create, um, a worship experience with the worship songs that we're doing. And, and um, there's, a, I think that's every time we have to just keep reminding ourselves of that, that this is not a show. This is, um, this is worship and this is our, our way of connecting our hearts to God in, in this time. And, and um, yeah, it's, it, it is that because it, it, because of the effort you have to put into trying to make something sound not truly rubbish, it can drift into that um performance world but um if the hard work that you know we see dave uh, and josh put in tells us anything is that that there is worship in editing and there is worship in yeah. um, putting yeah. together sort of videos and so actually you know the stresses that we had for our side of trying to make it work is also worship even even when we're fighting um with our computers to make something work properly in that there's worship and um and worship is hard hard sometimes you know when you don't feel like it and you still have to push in anyway yeah. um and i think that's that's something that i've taken away from this is actually it's not all just about floating around singing lovely songs and um just letting it happen it, it takes work from mm -hmm. for me to actually engage with god continuously in this yeah i think amen <laughs> So I'm just yeah. going to say thank you to all of you for spending some time with me and I will see you online again at some point. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.